Hi, my name is Christiane Burkhardt from Liz Minutes. Today I'm going to show you another technique for join as you go. This time it's going to be a one colored one I use in my new design Iona. First we're going to join the cast on row. This might seem a little bit tricky but it's easier than you think. After you cast on the amount of stitches required by your pattern, you yarn over your working yarn from underneath over the top of your needle, grab your piece you want to adjoin to, right side facing, take your first little chain from the edge stitches, go through that chain, pick up a stitch, and now you have two stitches more on your needle than before. Now for the next step, to secure this join and hide the color of the first knitted piece, we're going to lift the yarn over and the last cast on stitch over the just recently picked up stitch. And then it's connected. Tag a little bit on the tail, turn your work and tuck the stitch a little bit. Now slip your first stitch of the wrong side row as if to purl and work to the end of your row. Oops. And turn your work again. Now right side facing. I call it the right side. I like the little ridge which is going to happen, but you can call that your wrong side, whatever you want to achieve. In order to get a nice slip stitch chain edging on your piece to maybe attach another piece, I there is something necessary to do with the selvage stitch. I'm going to show you how this is done. With the yarn in the front, you slip your first stitch as if to purl, then you're going to put the yarn in between the working needle and the right hand needle to the back and continue to work on your row. And then going to knit the row to the last stitch Slip your last stitch as if to knit. Yarn over your yarn over the needle. Pick up a stitch from your chain edging and lift those two, the yarn over and the last just slipped stitch over the picked up stitch. You're going to repeat that process and joining more and more. Again, to achieve a nice slip stitch edging, slip your first stitch of the row as if to purl with the yarn in the front Bring it to the back between the two needles and continue to work your row to the last stitch. Slip your last stitch to attach, slip your last stitch to the, as if to knit. Yarn over from underneath over the top of the needle. Pick up a stitch to the next chain. If you're not quite sure if which chain you need to pick your stitch up, tuck a little bit on your knitting and you're going to see that the previous chain you already used is pulling. So you know this one is going to be the next one. Pick up your stitch and lift the yarn over, pass the yarn over and the last 
previously slipped stitch over your just picked up stitch. Now you're going to see that the chain created on top of your joint pieces is perfectly in one color. So even if you're going to use a darker color on your previous piece, it's perfectly hidden underneath this little chain. Another hint is that each chain here reflects two rows as well as a rich reflects two rows. So if you think you got lost and you lost count, you're able to count how many rows you already worked with counting your chains on top of the two strips. Another option is to count how many rows you're going to have to work counting the chains from your rid, uh, etching you're going to adjoin to. One chain reflects two rows as well as two rows reflect one ridge. So therefore you have always have this as a um, way to count where you're going to head or how many rows you already have completed. And you can already see in this piece a nice chain etching established to maybe attach another piece to this strip.